If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Zretro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. You know, when you've not done the podcast for a... Uh, for about a month, and when you've not done it, you've not covered all the latest news, you end up missing out on a lot of things. So, I'm gonna need to try and rectify that for this year. But anyway, hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro here, and welcome to a brand new series of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumours, and of course, those sweet points and trophies. We have got so much to get through today. We have got news on God of War and why DLC ideas would have made the game far too long to make. We have got news on an unfinished Darkwing Duck game from the developers of Sonic Mania. We have got job listings for Rockstar. That, amongst uh, other things, we have also got news on an Alien Isolation sequel, but it is not coming to console. Instead, it is actually coming to mobile. And we have also got the Battle of the Free Games, the first battle of 2019. Where it's Xbox versus PlayStation. Who's got the best free games for January 2019? And in our points and trophies section, the first one of the year. We are going to be going through all the DLC trophies for my 2018 Game of the Year, Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. All this coming up on the Trophy Achievement Podcast Season 2. Before we get into all of that though, it is time to send out a big shout out as always to my good friends over at Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as £3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial and you get free free game rentals. There are no late fees, you can keep the game as long as you like, or you can keep the game forever at a discounted price on the online store. This is available only to my UK viewers, but once you start renting, you're going to start saving fantastic customer service and overall a great service to use. At boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Oh, how I missed that iconic jingle, which means it's time for our gaming screw-up of the week. Who is this gaming screw-up from this week? Shock to absolutely no one, it's Electronic Arts once again. What a way to start the year, ladies and gentlemen. A gaming screw-up from Gaming Satan themselves. So, let's have a look at what this little screw-up is. I'm being sarcastic about the little, by the way. But nevertheless, EA refuses to honour its great game guarantee policy for Star Wars Battlefront. Hmm, now what could this great game guarantee be? Customer service is apparently confused, but the policy is pretty clear. This is on techspot.com. The article was written on January the 7th, which would have been this past Monday. So, here we go. Let's go through the article and I will give my thoughts. Electronic Arts is probably one of the more favourite whipping posts of the gaming community at large. Guilty as charged, Your Honour! It has been criticised from for everything from its greedy microtransactional business model, prevalent in most of its games, to its overly grindy progression systems that feed that model. 
over the weekend, EA has once again earned the ire of gamers for not honouring its advertised great game guarantee at the Origin Store. According to its own webpage, any EA games and some third party purchased on Origin are eligible for a refund as long as they meet a few simple requirements. If you don't love it, just return it. You may return EA full game downloads, PC or Mac, and participating third party titles on, an, on purchased on Origin for a full refund. Refund requests can be made within 24 hours after you first launch the game, within 14 days from your date of purchase, or within 14 days from when, or, or within 14 days from the game's release date if you pre-ordered, whichever comes first. It seems to be a re reasonably straightforward policy. However, for one Reddit user, it is an ongoing three-day ordeal. Now, bearing in mind these articles are at time of writing. Keep that in mind, folks. Redditor Papamje purchased Star Wars Battlefront from the Origin Store on January 2nd. After installing and launching the game, he was disappointed to find there was nobody else playing on the server, essentially rendering the multiplayer game unplayable. Papamje Papa opened a refund request well within the 24-hour time limit, but was told the purchase could not be refunded. This is just the start of it, ladies and gentlemen. The first customer service rep he spoke with told him that it had been more than 24 hours since the game launched. When he pointed out that the ticket was created before the time limit was up, the rep told him that the policy means 24 hours from purchase. Um, no. Refund requests can be made within 24 hours after you first launch the game. Even after quoting what the policy explicitly states on the website, the Redditor was still stonewalled. Within 24 hours after you first launched the game, Papamje said in the customer service chat, this is, in, this is black on white on your website. I can understand, however we are not able to refund the game. Or to put it another way, screw you, you... Or to put it another way, screw you, we refuse to refund you because we love money. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. He's basically EA in a nutshell. The user had several on other similar conversations with at least five different reps. None were able to grant his refund. They also contradicted each other about whether they could reference the time at which the game was first started. Some said they could, and others said it was impossible to know when he launched it. When he, when he asked to be put in touch with a supervisor, he was at first denied and had his tickets forcefully closed. When he finally was connected to a supervisor, it appeared to be the same rep just signed into a supervisor chat account. Oh boy. I finally got hold of a supervisor, whom I suspect not only to be an ordinary employee, but also the same person I talked to whom I asked to hand the conversation to a supervisor in the first place. He said, said Papamje. He is now into he's now into day three of his battle to get his refund. He reportedly was contacted by someone at EA who will take personal ownership of the case, whatever that means. The game only cost him fifteen euros. The game only cost him fifteen euros, which he doesn't even care about at this point. It has been boiled down to the matter of principle for the angry redditor. Yes, I want my money back, but I feel like that's no longer the point why I'm doing this. He said. EA has been mistreating and ne neglecting their most important product, the players. If I let this slide and give up, they will do it again and again because they can get away with it. So far, this post has received around 8,700 upvotes and hundreds of supporter comment, supportive comments. Now, and here are some of the <laughs> we got 
uh, some of the comments on this uh, this article are just another good reason not to do business with them. Yeah, which is why I never talk about EA games that much. I swear if Anthem doesn't do well, I refuse to play EA games again. Well, I refuse to purchase them anyway. Anyway, uh, just another uh, idea. What would have cost EA 15 euros will now cost them 15 euros and a large amount of in-brand damage. That's assuming they are smart and honour their refund policy. Not doing so could mean they get sued for much more. Oh, I really hope that happens. But it's not 15 euros. If you really want to avoid these kinds of situations, you need to refund every single customer who wanted a refund. How many of those denied a refund actually made a stink? And how many did not even bother trying to get a refund? Especially when you have to jump through so many hoops. I imagine even a false return policy... I imagine even a false return policy generates quite a lot of revenue. They lost here, but on the whole, who knows? That's true. Like, likely only a small portion of people will complain. The big problem with that is... If EA is habitually violating their end of the terms of service, they could have a big class action or even EU fines to contend with. If they want to save money, they should change their terms of service to reflect the jerks they are. Yeah. This kind of breach of contract is called a material breach, which is the most egregious variety. This happens when a company fails to uphold its end of the contract. Under law, terms of service are considered contracts. Thank you! In this case, EA is not fulfilling its return policy. A suit against them can include attorney fees, punitive damages, consequential damages, incidental gem damages, and compensa compensatory damages. So really, EA may continue to fail to fulfill its return policy at its own peril. It only takes one person to start a class action, and then they will be forced to pay multiple times the cost of the refund per person, not including any punitive damages. Document it well. Copies, recordings, get permission. You, you are making a recording for training purposes. Document it well. Copies, recordings, in brackets, get permission. You are making a recording for training purposes. You wouldn't want to misquote sometime in the future, etc. In the USA, FTC will actually do something someday after the shutdown is over, we hope. Everybody, everyone knows EA have atrocious customer service. They just don't care. Yep, sounds about right. They know people will buy their products. We all whine and moan whilst giving them money. I guess if we really cared, we wouldn't keep buying their stuff. Why do you think I rent my games rather than actually buying them? Especially if it's EA. Would be interesting to see how talented game developers and designers see their hard work butchered like this. Ooh, that's actually quite juicy. Now nah, the explicits who buy EA products are to blame. That's right, their gamers base. Is EA greedy with the microtransaction no business model? How about giving them a lesson by not buying every single release? It will solve their complaining also and probably teach EA a lesson. Granted, they will look for other ways to shaft you, but that doesn't mean you need to bend over every time and accept whatever from them. EA doesn't care about brand damage anymore. They are not called the most evil company in the world for nothing. EA is a horrible company. I, I have thousands of dollars of their products from the past, but will not buy another one of their games, nor will any of my car mates. EA uses their community manager's online presence not to resolve issues or push them to developers but to tell angry customers they should, they should have bought their products. EA's Braddock has lied over and over. Something legally should be done to these people, who spew lies after lies for more profit. The only thing that keeps EA afloat is their FIFA games. Other than, otherwise, they would implode. I really hope they do. Dai should be a billion-dollar company by now, but instead, it has been squandered by Electronic Arts. So sad that they don't have gamers in their upper management. EA went downhill a long time ago. Avoid at all costs. Had issues. Took months to resolve. Customer service really don't think they can call. Don't really think they can call it that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pretty much get the idea, folks. Now, EA. I'm just going to say this one more time. I'm only. I'm only going to say this once. But if I have to say it again, I am going to go into a full-on tirade and rant. 
you have got terms of service. Please ensure that you actually obey those terms of service. And on top of that, customers come first. You will get your money if you decide to actually make good products. And on top of that, make sure you get rid of every single business buffoon and actually have gamers that are part of the company. Just restart from scratch and give the people what they want, which is actually good games that do not rely on money. In other words, do not be a Mr. Krabs. Anyway, that's not the only gaming screw up of the week. Call of Duty's latest, latest microtransaction is a tiny red dot. Really? A tiny red dot? What's it going to cost? Right. For a game that's already taken heat from its player base for the price of its extra cosmetic items, Black Ops, 4 late, Black Ops 4's latest offering seems especially difficult to swallow. The, a red dot reticle showed up on in the Black Ops 4 black market on December 25th, wearing a price tag of 100 cod points, or about $1. The dollar price tag might not sound like a big deal for some, and charging for a basic dot to use on the reflex site attachments is laughable at best. However, Activision's overall microtransaction strategy for Black Ops 4 isn't landing well with all members of the Call of Duty community, and the one dollar dot is just another straw on the proverbial cow. How long is it going to be before we have the straw that breaks the camel's back? Many people were also disappointed that items they purchased from the black market at the end of December was, were quickly discounted at 50% off days later. Wow! The black market contains items such as skins, emblems and camos that are updated weekly, bi-weekly and daily. One recent pricey weekly item was the Takeo Blackout character skin for 800 COD points, which was marked down to 400 COD points just a few days after being added to the shop. Wow! I play a lot. Now this is on Kotaku, this uh, article is on Kotaku.com by the way. I play a lot of Blackout and I was initially eager to get the skin, but my indecisiveness paid off. I waited and saw the half off sale, jumped on and jumped on the deal to everyone who purchased Takio right before the black market updated with a death counter price. Let me just say, ouch. Call of Duty YouTuber Prestige is key, had a pretty heartfelt rant on this issue, and other players have voiced their displeasure via Twitter. Adding insult to injury for Xbox One X players, an update on December 18th created an issue with blackout freezing or crashing on Xbox One X consoles if the player managed to survive late into the match when the Call of Duty Twitter account tweeted about black market, black market sale and holiday double XP event, there were some angry tweets that demanded a fix and extension for the event. Treyarch finally released an update on January 3rd addressing the catastrophe plaguing the Xbox One X consoles, but those players had already missed out on earning double XP. They could still buy reticles and new character skins though. So Activision, you'd rather the uh, sink money into this atrocious system which is now poison in the gaming community, rather than actually taking care of the customers and actually extending the double XP event. Now that Call of Duty has entered the Battle Royale competition and added a Fortnite-style progression system for earning gear, Activision might want to take notes from Epic Games in terms of how the cosmetic content should be handled. In other words, it should only be cosmetic items, costumes, and skins are the only things that should be part of the microtransaction system. The reticle should be part of the game without having to pay for the damn thing! Being hit up for one dollar for a new reticle feels a little money grubbing in 2018's best-selling $60 game. Yeah, because you didn't have microtransactions at first, but oh! No, you had to add the microtransactions after the reviews were put in. Don't think we take these things unnoticed. We are not stupid. 
Hello to all Happy New Year, folks! And we have two gaming screw-ups. Fantastic! Fantastic. Now, this one's from CBR.com. On to the main portion of the news. Marvel Games teasing Fantastic Four content coming to PS4 Spider-Man. And I just got the season pass that got all the City That Never Sleeps DLC. Don't worry, I'll make sure I cover it on my channel, don't worry. So anyway, here we go. Insomniac Games rewarded fans this year with their PlayStation 4 exclusive Spider-Man, which abandoned decades of potentially hindering comic continuity to construct their own version of the Marvel Universe. It was a risky move that worried fans, but gave developers the ultimate freedom to use the Marvel Universe as their playground. And it paid off big. A new look at the various relationships in Peter Parker's life allowed characters like Miles Morales to experience their own origin story alongside Spider-Man in a way that the comics didn't with villains like Otto Octavius becoming more central to the life of Peter Parker. The game's universe was so well received, it has been recently been adapted to the comics, with the PS4 Spidey, brackets Earth 1048, appearing in the Spider-Geddon event. Marvel's Spider-Man has continued breathing life into the new characters through dedicated DLC content, which introduces new reimagined characters like Black Cat and Hammerhead, along with the release of a number of new story chapters, challenges, and most importantly, new suits to unlock. The City That Never Sleeps recently completed its DLC release, leaving fans wanting more, so Marvel the Games made a fantastic livestream announcement about upcoming new content, which may involve Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. And this is what the tweet said from Marvel Games. And our final hashtag Fantastic Four Week livestream announcement, something fantastic is coming to Marvel's Spider-Man. Any guesses? As one would imagine, there were a lot of guesses as to what this vague tease could mean, with the general consensus being a few new costumes that could uh, make their appearance in the game. Spider-Man has been associated with the Fantastic Four since the very first issue of Amazing Spider-Man number one, and has worn a number of related costumes over the years, from the bombastic Bagman outfit to his black and white future foundation suit. Of course, there is always the possibility that a new set of DLC featuring either the Fantastic Four or even just Spidey's best bud Johnny Storm or Human Torch may be on the horizon, considering we've seen the end of the city that never sleeps. The announcement came as part of Marvel's Fantastic Four The Greatest Week, hashtag Fantastic Four Week, which had previously revealed that former Blizzard developers Second Dinner are working on a video game project with Marvel. This game followed an interesting change to Marvel Games' Twitter profile, teasing the Fantastic Four, which, many, which led many to believe that the second dinner team could be working on a Fantastic Four-related project. However, could this more recent tease of the Fantastic Spider-Man PS4 edition be the reason for the profile change instead of the second dinner news? Or could they both be related? Ooh. Fantastic Four Greatest Week. Fantastic Four The Greatest Week continues celebrating Marvel's first family of heroes until January 16th. So it just started yesterday! Interesting. How's about that? I definitely like the sound of that. I am definitely liking the sound of that. Who goody gumdrops. Can't wait to see how that plays out. Now, on PlayStationLifestyle.net, Bias sets sights on GameStop, which needs to reduce its debt fast. Ooh, so GameStop could be entering administration. Hmm, interesting. Okie dokie. According to the Wall Street Journal, private equity firms Apollo Global Management and Sycamore Partners are reportedly bidding to acquire GameStop. A deal could be made as early as mid-February 2019, so we could be just a month away from that. GameStop has $817 million in debt to reduce, and analysts are recommending the company closes some stores and goes private in order to alleviate the pressures of diversifying its revenue, even during what's clearly a financial hardship for the company. Although GameStop is becoming increasingly known for its thick, uh, Think Geek product line, its accessories, uh, the wall of Funko Pops, and the like, 
GameStop's revenue is still 50% comprised of its new and used games sales. While things have been looking rough for GameStop for quite some time, the company is well aware uh, it's in an adapt or die situation. It sold Spring Mobile to help alleviate debt, perhaps more importantly, enhance other revenue streams, but it doesn't seem like enough to offset the company's losses and combat the decline in pre-order sales. Rest assured that even a buyout doesn't necessarily mean the end of GameStop as we know it. But every year, players seem to skew more and more towards digital purchases, raising concerns for the future of brick and mortar video game businesses. Shop there or not, this company has had a core role in the video game community, from occasional discounts to exclusive bundles and even exclusive games. Hopefully things pick up. Mm. Mind you, in the grand scheme of things, GameStop haven't had the best reputation either. Now, this is quite a bizarre one. Kari Video Game Company, creator of Fortnite, gets an F rating from BBB. Whatever in the world that means. Ah, no, my... Ah, no, stop! Stop doing this! One of the most okay, epic games of the year received an F. Oh, an F rating from the Better Business Bureau with 279 complaints on file. Okay, creator of the games of Fortnite, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the old years of war. Of the 279 complaints, 241 have gone unanswered, most of them regarding unsanctioned charges. Oof, ouch. 20 million, 25 million, yada yada yada. Hmm. The BBB has attempted to contact Epic Games, but they have failed to respond. Ooh, that's not good. Well, um, okay, not what we were expecting, folks. So, hmm, yeah, they might want to get that fixed pretty soon, otherwise people are going to start dropping away from their games. I mean, business-wise, they're doing great, don't get me wrong, but... Over 200 complaints going unanswered? Hmm. Anyway, anyway, some more positive news. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> to reveal characters game and gameplay next week. Following Mortal Kombat 11's reveal at the 2018 Game Awards, fan excitement has practically become palpable with the forthcoming fighting game easily being one of the most highly anticipated titles of 2019, next to Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, it looks as if NetherRealm Studios is preparing to begin building on that hype by ecking out information regarding the next entry in the long-running series, as it intends on providing a look at gameplay, story details, and character reveals next week. Those looking forward to Mortal Kombat 11's community reveal, community with a K by the way, <laughs> should mark their calendars for January 17th, 2019. And hey, that's just next week! As a video stream of the London event is officially set to go live, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 11 a.m., so add eight hours onto that, and it'll be 7 p.m. start. 
While character reveals have been confirmed for the event, there's no word just yet as to whether or not NetherRealm Studios will be showing off any actual newcomers to the series, as there's always the chance that the developer could stick to unveiling franchise favourites. Let's say next week on January 17th at 11am, we'll show you gameplay, a little story, and maybe give you some character reveals. How does that sound? Just make sure you tune in for the reveal. And that's from the official Mortal Kombat Twitter account. For those who may be out of the loop in regards to the established members of the Mortal Kombat 11's roster so far, there have only been a handful of characters, fighters confirmed as characters. To be specific, three out of the four are classic combatants, while only one seems to be a newcomer. Those who wish to get a closer look at the fresh roster pick will do well to check out Mortal Kombat 11's gory debut trailer. The video features their likeness in a tease towards the end of the footage, with the fighter appearing to be a bald woman with some kind of blue fire powers. Hmm. Maybe Shiva, possibly? Maybe something similar to Shiva? I don't know. Taking everything into account, it'll be interesting to see who NetherRealm Studios decides to show up in Mortal Kombat 11's community reveal, and whether or not any of these fighters will help corroborate certain information being shared in myriad leaked rosters circulating online. Of course, while fans await next week's event, it's safe to see that speculation will continue unabated. After all, plenty of teasers have occurred so far, with folks like Todd McFarlane suggesting that his popular horror fantasy Spawn Character, uh, horror fantasy character Spawn may be a guest fighter. Mortal Kombat 11 is currently scheduled to launch on April 23rd, 2019 for PC, PlayStation 4, Switch, and Xbox One. Damn, I'm excited! God love Mortal Kombat, folks. God love Mortal Kombat. Where'd my phone go? Where has it gone? Where has it gone? Where has it gone? Oh, fridge. Hang on a second. <sighs> fridge, where did I put it? Oh, where did I put my phone? Where did I put my phone? Oh, right underneath my spot. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Right, um... Right. We've got news regarding God of War on IGN. So here we go. Um, God of War's director, Corey Balrog, uh, Balrog, revealed that he had a couple of DLC stories written for Kratos' latest adventure but that the time, investment, and ambition of the team would have made it a little too big. Speaking to IGN on Beyond's God of War retrospective, at around 33 minutes 30 seconds, Barlog discussed why God of War, IGN's 2018 Game of the Year, ended up not releasing any new story content after its release in April. There was a time when I wrote a couple of DLCs that we were talking about. Okay, what if we did release some stuff, some other stuff after? Barlog said, you know, there are interesting ideas, but I think the amount of time we'd have put into it, it would start to end up kind of like a left behind or a first light kind of thing. Where it's just so big, like Lost Legacy or something like that. I think... I have a difficulty with lower ambition with the lower ambition portion that I end up saying maybe it's just a little too big. Balrog in his comments was referring to Last of Us Left Behind, Infamous First Light, and Uncharted Lost Legacy, which are more or less standalone games released as DLC as opposed to smaller stories added post launch. Balrog continued by saying that being able to go back and add content to the games after they launch which wasn't possible during the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 days, does tempt you as a creator to potentially put flashlights in the hands of 
soldiers kind of thing. He mentioned that he has va that as his values change, he does have the urge to go and change them and add new things. But for Balog, he leans towards putting the effort towards new projects and saying, there's a delicate place. That's a delicate place because I think I would want to make something new. Many of these new things will hopefully be a follow-up to God of War, which many fans will be craving after the game's fantastic end ending. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, I liked that I liked the game. I just I uh, just haven't had the time to be able to one hundred percent it because it would just be ridiculously difficult. <laughs> They're just finding the time to do it. But anyway, Sonic Mania devs share unfinished Darkwing Duck video game. Hmm, okay. Now, there's no question that Sonic Mania and its respective so uh, follow-up Sonic Mania Plus are momental, monumental throwbacks to, to the mascot, uh, to the mascot's old school days. Somebody proofread these articles, please. But that's not the only bit of retro goodness that the developers of Headcanon were working on. An interesting new pitch has emerged, indicating that the team also wanted to work on another favourite from the 90s, Disney's Darkwing Duck. The team was apparently going to use, uh, going for a similar reborn vibe to what WayForward did with its DuckTales remastered game from a few years ago. Utilising gameplay mechanics, but throwing them into a new sophisticated side-scrolling adventure. The footage features about five something minutes of gameplay. And honestly, it looks like the game would have been a lot of fun, even though Head Cannon was going f more for a Game Boy Advance style of visual filter, rather than the remastered visuals that DuckTales had. Aaron Sparrow, who served as writer for Darkwing Duck, talked about the project on Twitter, explaining, Last year at Sylvani Art and I were involved with brainstorming a Darkwing Duck video game with at HC Stealth, that's the official Twitter handle for uh, Headcam. It would have had animated art by James and voiceover by as many of the original cast as possible. Sadly, Capcom passed on it, but you can see a bit here. The video game can be the video can be seen above. Hmm. I'll watch that in my own time. He continued. It was conceived as a spiritual successor to the original NES game, unless Capcom wanted to go full DuckTales Remastered with it. It was planned to take place between the show and the, the Duck Knight Returns, with Steelbeak, Taurus, Bulba, and the Fearsome Five as the villains. What about Negaduck? Each character would be pixelated from James's art, and each level would be bridged by a chapter break presented in motion comic form, with full voiceover and sound effects, and yes, you would have gotten to fight Wolf Duck. He concluded, uh, Head Cannon and his team were great to work with. Not only was I able to guide the story, but they even involved me in level design and gameplay mechanics discussions. It was truly one of the most incredibly collaborative experiences I've ever been honoured to be a part of. We're not sure why Capcom would have passed on such a great project, unless it was unsure how Darkwing Duck would perform, but considering how well the original NES game did on the company's Disney Afternoon, in the, in the company's Disney Afternoon collection, maybe they ought to give it reconsideration, and for good measure, bring Jim, bring Jim Cummings in to voice him again! Fingers crossed that the game does get a second chance. We need our terror that flaps in the night. Dark wing duck. Let's get dangerous. Now, next up, next up, we've got Dragon's Dogma heading to the Switch in April. Capcom's porting the 2013 expanded version, Dark Arisen. Capcom is bringing Dark Dragon. 
Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, a, the 2013 role play, Western role-playing game inspired action game to Nintendo Switch on April 23rd. The Switch version will cost $30. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen for Switch will include all the previously released content and DLC. Capcom promises a revamped user interface that will offer improved screen visibility on Switch, hopefully making the game's UI readable while playing in portable while playing in portable or tabletop mode. Content-wise, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen for Switch appears to be identical to the game that first hit PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2013. Players will be able to take on one of nine vocations, customize their character and AI-controlled companions, known as pawns, and battle giant mythical, be mystical beasts. The game's pawn system, which lets players share their companions with others, won't require a Nintendo Switch online subscription. Nice! Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen expanded upon the original Dragon's Dogma, first released in 2012. The core game was directed by longtime Devil May Cry series lead Hideaki Itsuno. Screenshots of the Switch version of the Dark Arisen can be seen in the gallery on the article at uh, polygon.com. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, all right. Anybody want? Anybody want to work at Rockstar? You might want to take notice. Rockstar is working on a next gen game. Job listing. Confirms. Rockstar Games may have released its award-winning cowboy adventure Red Dead Redemption 2 just a few months ago, but that doesn't mean the studio plans to rest on its laurels. It seems that Rockstar is already rearing to go on to its next project, and it's planning big things for the next generation of consoles. Well, that's according to multiple job listings found on Rockstar Games' website. One job listing for a senior environmental artist at Rockstar India explains that candidates will be working with the development team to create next generation worlds for some exciting upcoming products. projects. Candidates can't just have strong modeling and texturing skills, says the listing, as the hired artist must be able to create immersive, living and fully realized environments as well. At Rockstar New York, meanwhile, the famed video game developer is hiring a mocap tools developer to help create and build upon the next generation of mocap tools and pipeline. The high developer will be working on some of the largest scale projects we've found in an entertainment medium, says the listing. Considering that Red Dead Redemption 2 already features the largest map created by Rockstar, this listing may indicate that the studio's next project will somehow be even bigger. Unsurprisingly, for this famously tight-lipped studio, the job listings don't provide any hints at exactly what Rockstar will be working on next. But that doesn't mean fans can't speculate. One game that fans can safely rule out is Agent. The long-in-development shooter was announced all the way back in 2007. Although the studio has renewed the Agent trademark repeatedly throughout the years, Rockstar finally abandoned it a couple of months ago. It seems pretty reasonable to think that Agent has been canned. Other popular suggestions may be Bully 2. Fans have been calling for a sequel to the Schoolyard Sandbox ever since the first game released back in 2006. Although, 20, although 12 years have passed, fans are still eager for a new game in the series. As evidenced by the way people responded apparently, responded to apparently fake Bully 2 content art that did the rounds last year. Some may even want Rockstar Games to develop Red Dead Redemption 3. The studio is thinking about about it and it has confirmed that it already has some ideas on where they could take the front where it could take the franchise next however whether or not the developer is actively working on the project is unclear for now or maybe Grand Theft Auto 6 and we can return to Vice City now some good news for Rare uh, Sony fans, PlayStation 4 sales are closing in on 100 million units. 
during its CES keynote, Sony has announced it has sold 91.6 million PS4 consoles worldwide overall. The tech giant sold 18 million PS4 units over the past 12 months, with 5.6 million of those sold during the holiday season alone, from November, 20, uh, November 19th to December 31st. That's despite a, predic a prediction that Sony gaming chief John Codera earlier this year that the, co that the console sales would begin to slow down because the PS4 is reaching its saturation point. Those numbers are a bit lower than the 20.2 million units Sony was able to move in 2017, but they're not bad at all for a console that's been around for over five years. PS4 games also did very well over the holidays. Sony says 50.7 million PS4 titles were sold during the season, bringing the total sales of 864 million uh, as of December 20. Uh, December 31st, 2018. Marvel Spider-Man in particular was a standout title. It sold over 9 million units. 9 million companies. Pff, 9 million units from its launch in September until November 25th. In addition, Codera announced that PlayStation Network surpassed 90 million monthly active users by the end of November 2018. Up 10 million since May. Wow. Well done, PlayStation. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Now, Nintendo have started jumping on the free games bandwagon now. But what free games do they have in store? They're not going to be part of the battle of the free games, folks. Don't worry. But they have some free NES games for those subscribed to Nintendo Switch's online service. Which means essentially if you've got all three platforms, hallelujah, you've got some more games to play. One of the benefits of subscribing to Nintendo Switch Online is that you get access to a library of classic NES games to play. Play as much as you want. Nintendo is adding two or three, depending on where you live, to the service in January. And now they have been announced. Arriving on arriving January 16th are two games from 1998. Blaster Ma don't they mean don't they mean 1988? Blaster Master and Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link. In Japan, subscribers get a third game. Joy Mech Fight. Very interesting. The NES library for Switch Online subscribers launched with 20 big name games including Super Mario Bros, The Legend of Zelda, Dr. Mario, Ice Climbers, Metroid and Donkey Kong. Switch, Nintendo Switch Online costs $4 a month. $4 US dollars a month or $8 US dollars for 3 months. So essentially 2 months for what? Not bad. A 12-month subscription goes for $20, while a family membership for up to eight Nintendo... Hello? A family membership of up to eight Nintendo accounts members costs 35 US dollars for a year. New subscribers can sign up with a seven-day free trial. In addition to free NES games, subscribers can get access to cloud saves online player, online multiplayer for many titles such as Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Mario Kart 8 Ultimate. Nice! Again, someone needs to proofread these articles. Now, this is a very interesting one. This is on PCGamer.com. The division, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 will release on the Epic Store, not Steam, interestingly. Ubisoft and Epic, U, Ubisoft and Epic have announced a semi-exclusive par partnership for PC game releases. Epic Games scored a big one today, and at time of writing, yeah, just yesterday, in fact, scored a big one yesterday with the announcement of a partnership with Ubisoft that will see at least some of its future PC releases come to 
the Epic Games Store, and not to Steam. Very interesting. I was about that. As reported by Polygon, the semi-exclusive deal will begin in March with the launch of The Division 2. We have no plans currently on releasing Tom Clancy's Division 2 on Steam, a Ubisoft rep said. Ubisoft and Epic will also partner on additional, additional secrets, uh, select titles coming to the Epic Games Store to be announced during the coming year. No doubt they'll have details of that at E3. We entrust Epic to deliver a smooth journey for our fans, from pre-ordering the game and enjoying our beta to the launch of Tom Clancy's The Division 2 on March 15th. Ubisoft the Vice President of Partnerships, Chris Early, said in the announcement. I wonder if he's early to work every day. Epic continues to disrupt the video game, uh, video game industry and their third party digital distribution model as is the latest example and something Ubisoft wants to support. The Division 2 has been listed on Steam and can still be seen in the Steam database but the product page has been removed. It will also be available for purchase through Ubisoft's own storefront, Uplay. Are we about to potentially see the start of the downfall for Steam? Who knows? Who knows? Right. This one's on wired.co.uk. Why esports players need to unionize in 2019. As their industry and fame grows at a rapid pace, professional gamers must ensure they have the same protectors as other protections as other workers. Hmm. Now this was uh, on Sunday. This past week, fans of the Boston Red Sox baseball team were surprised to learn in May 2018 that David Price, the team's superstar pitcher, would miss his scheduled start after being diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome, a painful and sometimes disabling condition caused by the squeezing of the nerves leading to the hand, to, leading from the hand to the arm. As Price was known to be a video game aficionado, the news sparked rumors on social media that his ailment was caused not by too much pitching, but rather pl too much time playing Fortnite. Oh, good grief. Price returned to the mound, but the episode raised questions about eSports injuries. He had been unable to pitch, he could... Had he been... Had he been unable to pitch, he could still have collected the remainder of his seven-year, $217 million contract because he is a member of the powerful Major League Baseball Players Association. But such protections are not afforded to the tens of thousands of esports players, including those who play Fortnite professionally. Many have already been forced into early retirement due to career ending injuries from gaming. Most notably, Hey Hey Lam, a 25 year old pro known for his dominating, his domination of the North American League of Legends Championship Series, who stepped back due to a strain related wrist injury. While retirements like Hayes, uh, have received much of the press, there are many situations where players are forced to take an extended take extended absences from gaming due to injuries of their hands, wrists, necks, and even lungs. Those absences come with little financial and medical support, but this will change in 2019 as players push to be represented by a union. Many esports players are highly skilled, they demonstrate exquisite hand-eye coordination and mental stamina, and they're Games attract more than 225 million viewers around the world, generating large amounts of money. According to Forbes, esports revenue are esports revenues are expected to top one billion dollars in 2019. Esports athletes are primarily compensated as freelance contractors via cash prizes for winning tournaments. Although some of the more accomplished players do receive small salaries to cover day-to-day -day expenses, the relationships between players, teams and content providers such as Blizzard Entertainment, the US video game US based video game developer are still maturing. Although the distributor although the distribution of revenues is not reported in a transparent fashion for this still adolescent sector, a rough order calculation using data from sources such as ESC 
which monitors the sector, indicates that they, as a group, proofread these articles. That, as a group, players currently receive less than 15% of the revenue pot. This lack of transparency as to how revenue is shared might have been acceptable when video games were purely a leisure activity, but as the industry grows, players will demand more. Compare this to the Premier League UK broadcasting revenue. $5.13 billion was paid to the league by Sky and BT for the 2016 to 2019 UK broadcast rights, and 50% of this is shared between clubs, contributing hugely to player wages. In response, in 2019, esports players will begin to unionise. Players will seek to use collective bargaining to protect their earnings in the event of injury, to win healthcare or retirement benefits, and to negotiate revenue sharing agreements. Challenges exist, especially when considering how to build a framework that works across borders given the global nature of gaming. But already certain stakeholders within the industry are exploring how to make a union a reality. Riot Games, which runs multiplayer tournaments, launched a players association in 2018. We are learning more and more about the types of physical and mental stresses gaming places on players, such as repetitive strain injuries, and are starting to understand that esports players are working who deserve that esports players are workers who deserve protection. In 2019, they will finally get the union they deserve. I really hope, I definitely hope this happens. Because definitely sounds like this is something that's been long overdue at this point. Now, Alien Isolation finally getting a sequel, but it's on mobile. Fans of the Alien franchise may have been wondering why a series of terrifying motion po posters appearing on the anthology's Instagram account last month. And, n we, and now we know the reason. A new game. Alien Blackout is on the way, but it's not coming to consoles. Instead, the game is a mobile title for iOS and it follows Amanda Ripley, the daughter of the original film's protagonist, Ellen Ripley. It carries on from 2014's Alien Isolation, and like his predecessor, the new game sees Amanda stuck ab aboard a Wayland Ut Wayland Utani space station with a horrifying xenomorph. The main difference between the mobile game and its pre predecessor is that instead of first-person gameplay, the player takes on a far more voyeuristic role. Using the space station surveillance system, motion sensors and holographic map to watch over the crew and its alien invader. However, not everyone is happy that the sequel will be coming to mobile rather than consoles. The highly anticipated Alien Isolation successor, Alien Blackout, has just been announced as being a mobile game. And it's a Winnie the Pooh gift, ticker crying. <laughs> Gets excited for Alien, Alien Isolation 2, an alien, game for mo game, I mean, an alien game for mobile instead. Can't hide my disappointment. Actions have consequences. Developer D3, D3 Go said, says that players must rely on the damaged controls of the space station or risk sacrificing crew members to avoid deadly contact, permanently altering the outcome of the game. Spy on the crew and making decisions that could alter their fate in potentially horrifying ways could prove even more gripping than the exciting first-person adventure we saw in Alien Isolation. So far, there is no word on an official release date or pricing for Alien Blackout, so whether you love the idea or hate it, you will probably have to wait a little while to find out if heading to mobile was a good move. Very interesting. Now, Metroid Prime 4 release date leaks online. How's about that? <laughs> <In> <laughs> Exclamation mark 
Finally! Arguably one of the biggest and most anticipated games rumoured to hit Switch this year, Metroid Prime 4's release date is something Nintendo has been keeping tightly under wraps. And we still don't know what the game is about or whether or not it will follow the formula of the previous games. It's safe to say that fans can wait for any price, can't wait for any piece of news regarding the new game. But in case you're sick of playing the waiting game, check online super retailer Supergamer decided to go to go the way of Walmart Canada and have revealed the release date of Metroid Point Metroid Prime 4 on its on their page and it's Friday November 29th 2019. Of course the naysayers and those who can read check will say the picture above says planned planned release date 29/11/2019. I refer those people to the next picture. The screenshots, um, the screenshot also taken from the same page, clearly states that the game will be in stock on November 29th, 2019, marked with a green arrow. It makes sense for Metroid Prime 4 to release in the holiday period when Nintendo can push the game heavily with a large marketing budget and try to sell as many Switch consoles as possible. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the game. Only 10 months and change to go. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now, who knows what's going to happen from there? We will just need to wait and see what happens. How, epic game, how the Epic Games Store is the first real threat to Steam. And I mentioned this earlier. This article was originally published on December 7th, 2018, after the Epic Store Game Store's launch, but has been re-promoted and updated in light of news that The Division 2 will launch on Epic's platform instead of Steam. Interesting. So here we go. This is what we've got. Fortnite developer Epic Games announced and then launched a digital storefront house in the Epic Games launch last month. As apparently that's the trendy thing to do nowadays. With Discord, la with Discord launched its own... While well, Discord launched its own back in October. Proof read these articles. But despite the competition, the Epic Games store feels like the first real threat to Steam's dominance as the go-to place to buy PC games. I'm not saying that Steam is certainly doomed, and even if Epic does manage to push it off the top spot, it will most def it will almost definitely take a long time, likely years. But this new store is in a unique position to do so. Thanks to Fortnite, there are millions of players out there with the stores or with the store already installed, and Epic doesn't have to convince or force the player base into using its store in the same way other developer made launches like Origin and Uplay did the latter of which also uses Steam, but is already switching to Epic's store for The Division 2. This article again is on IGN. More than that, UK, uh, more than that, Epic has already got a massive loyalty from people playing Fortnite on mobile, that audience that audience is much younger, and I would bet most of them don't even have a gaming PC yet. But a couple of years down the line, they might, and if Fortnite is still as big as it is now, which seems likely, I mean, look at Overwatch and Rocket League, for example, the Epic Games launcher will undoubtedly be the first thing that audience installs on their new fancy computers. The promise of access that to that growing player base is undoubtedly an exciting prospect for many and for any major development. But Epic is also offering devs a significantly larger 88% cut of revenue than Valve currently does on Steam. Well, I mean, Epic are already making enough money with Fortnite anyway. A point that leads to rising discontent with the platform recently. That means Epic is convincing game makers to get on board with a further that Discord or GOG haven't, and already has the audience waiting to browse. Epic came out swinging at the Game Awards last year too. It announced that Bastion creator Supergiant Games 
newest game Hades was launching that night exclusively on the Epic Store, alongside Annapurna's highly anticipated Ashen. Another big surprise was that Journey, a previously a Sony exclusive, would be coming to PC on the Epic Store. Other games like Super Meat Boy Forever and the next episode of the now resurrected Telltale's The Walking Dead have been bailed on Steam entirely to switch platforms, with larger developers like Ubisoft already following suit just a month later. As a bit of a bribe to check it out, Epic even revealed it would be giving away a new game on its on their store completely free every two weeks, which have so far included Super Meat Boy, Subnautica, and what remains to be the Finch. It's clear that they are pushing this hard to an audience bigger than your average Fortnite fan, and I'd say it's safe to expect many more exclusive to Epic announcements by E3 next year, well, this year. As for the platform itself, the Epic Game Store seems to be offering a good start, seems to offer a good start, but it's still woefully underfeatured compared to Steam. The UI is attractive, though I'm not sure how it will scale once it has more than a couple dozen games on it. But then again, we don't even, we don't yet know how Epic is planning to curate the games at its ads, or if it will go for the much criticized anything goes policy on Steam. But some of these things Steam and other platformers have standardized by now are still missing, like cloud saves for your account. More concerningly, it hasn't retained some of Steam's hard learned lessons, specifically around early access labeling. Hades was released in early access, but lacks any of the warnings, updates, plans, and, or other details that Steam has mandated to protect customers from buying into a bad deal. There's an early access FAQ that you have to click into, but it lacks the hard structured answers Steam enforces and is missing much of the same info as a result. Since Fortnite is pretty much a perpetual state of early access, it's not surprising that Epic would be less concerned about this, but that doesn't mean clear warnings and protections shouldn't still be there. I don't doubt for, for a second that Supergiant will treat Hades at its, and, and its fans right. And maybe Epic Games, and maybe Epic plans to vet early access games and their developers itself before allowing them onto the store. But that would mean Epic also takes responsibility if a game is abandoned before completion. Oh, interesting. Right, so every game, so every game on Epic Games Store so far. We've got Hello Neighbor, Hades, Ashen, Journey coming soon. Darksiders 3 coming soon, Genesis Alpha 1, Super Meat Boy Forever, Super Meat Boy. Oh, it's free right now. Oh, if I'm lucky, I might be able to get it. It's a man eater. Shadow Complex Remastered, Rebel Galaxy, World War Z, Unreal Tournament, Subnautica, Was Free, Satisfactory. Coming soon, Outer Wilds, and Fortnite.
right, let's go there. I'm optimistic that the user experience of the store will grow and improve past its fairly basic start, but there are still a lot of questions left to answer before we know which way the wind is blowing. A million little things could change or go wrong for Epic, and we probably won't really know if it's catching on in a significant way for at least the next year. Countless stores have come and gone, or at least been forgotten in the past, and Epic's could easily be next. But with a huge amount of, of both players and devs already on board, alongside a younger audience quickly growing up, it's not unreasonable to think that the Epic game store could slowly rise towards being the new normal. Even if that happens, Steam likely won't die as a result of that success, but the Epic game store is almost certainly the most genuine threat to its crown so far. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm waiting for my verification while I'm waiting for my verification email to come through for the first time this year it is the battle of the free games Xbox versus PlayStation for January 2019 <laughs> now since Microsoft dominated last year they are gonna have the honor of going first. So, the games they have on offer are as follows. Right now we have got Celeste, one of their, the many hits of 2018, and World Rally Championship 6, both available on Xbox One. And we have got And there we go. And there we go. 
We've got that. So there we go. We've got, and um, we've also got Lara Croft Guardian of Light, which was a game with gold a while back as well. And we've now got Far Cry 2 added to the list, and both those games will be backwards compatible on Xbox One. Lara Croft Guardian of Light available right now until the 15th of January, and Far Cry 2 available from the 16th. Now, for Celeste, we've got recent win. it says here, recent winner of 2018 Game Awards Best Independent Game category. Help Madeline survive her inner demons and scale to the top of Celeste Mountain in this tight, narrative-driven platformer. You'll uncover a multitude of de devious secrets and side chapters, side chapters in 700 plus screens of hardcore challenges built into a touching story of self-discovery. Don't miss out on this highly acclaimed title. We've got, here we go, a World Rally Championship 6 on a racetrack. The car makes all the difference. In a rally, it's all on you. Take your driving skills to the limit in World Rally Championship 6. Whether fog, mud or punctured tyres, you'll deal with it all. In, all, in, su in 11 super special stages, including local split-screen multiplayer, experience rally racing like never before. Lara Croft Guardian of Light. Team up with a friend or go it alone in Lara Croft Guardian of Light. In this co-op action adventure title. Traverse and solve deadly traps, fight hordes of undead, the undead, and collect over 60 artifacts and relics with the help of a 2,000 year old Mayan warrior. Retrieve the ancient mirror of smoke and stop the forces of evil. Now for Far Cry 2, survive war-torn Africa and eliminate the mysterious Jacqueline. Far Cry 2, the first sequel in the award-winning franchise, features real-time storytelling where every decision you make will affect the final outcome of the game. Use cunning, subversion and brute force to exploit your enemies and fulfill your deadly mission. Interesting. Now, on Sony's end, what do we have? Not only is it a new year, but it's also a new month because we've breezed past the first Tuesday in January, a fresh set of six, and because we've breezed past the first Tuesday in January, a fresh set of six games is available for free to all PlayStation Plus subscribers. So whether you have PS4, PS3, or PS Vita, you can head to the PS Plus page to add the freebies to your library. Just make sure you do it before Sony changes them out for the next month's games on February 5th. PS4 owners can grab the Ubisoft Extreme Sports game Steep, which takes place in an open world version of the Alps, and you can descend using skis, snowboard, or wingsuit. The other PlayStation 4 game is Portal Knight, a co-op RPG that incorporates Minecraft-like building mechanics. If you have a PS3, you can pick up the trippy music rhythm game Amplitude, also playable on PS4, yes, and Robot Battling Bundle, Zone of the Enders HD Collection. January's games for Vita owners are the action RPG Fallen Legion, Flames of Rebellion, playable on PS4 as well, and right. Let's see, here's a friend, right, and, and the arcade and the arcade action platform was Super Mutant Alien Assault. If you use PlayStation Plus mainly to fill out your PS3 or PS Vita game libraries, here's a friendly reminder. Starting in March 2019, Sony will no longer give away free PS3 games and PS Vita games for PlayStation Plus members. It's unclear if anything will replace these freebies, but if you subscribe to PlayStation Plus primarily for these three titles, consider turning off your subscriptions also the new option or by cancel it or cancelling it by then. Interesting. Okay. So now you've got so you've got four game you've got uh see you've got four games on PlayStation 4 you can play. Steep's the only like major title there. But you've got Celeste on Xbox best independent game of 2018 so this month goes to microsoft building on their momentum from 2018 they draw first blood in 2019 so 
On to the final part of the show. We have got we have got uh, one section worth five trophies, one for seven, and another one for seven trophies. It's DLC. It's the it's DLC trophies. How often do I do that? DLC trophies, and that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep. Points and trophies, ladies and gentlemen, and I am covering the DLC trophies for Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, my 2018 game of the year. And DLC achievements are as follows. Uh, for, the, for the heist section of the city that never sleeps, the bronze trophies are as follows. The Long Con completes the Like a Fiddle mission. Bye Felicia, complete the Follow the Money mission. Here Kitty Kitty, complete the Black Cat Chase. The Cat Came Back, complete the Maria mission. Disorganized Crime, complete all crimes in a district. The Silver Trophy here is Screwy and Get Spectacular or Better in all Screwball Challenges. And the Gold Trophy here, Seduced by the City, complete the City That Never Sleeps, the Heist. Turf Wars, five bronze trophies here. We've got Prohibition, take down each hammerhead front. Steel Skull, Glass Jaw, complete the Bring the Hammer Down mission. Crossing the Thin Blue Line, complete the Lockup mission. Pulling the Trigger, complete the Blindsided mission. And then the bronze, silver and gold trophies are pretty much the same as the uh, previous ones I just mentioned. It will be the Gang War. The Gang War, Turning the Screw, and The City is My Family. And they're just pretty much the same as... Uh, they're pretty much the same. Complete all crime, spectacular, we're better in all screwball challenges, and complete The City that Never Sleeps, Turf Wars. And then we've got Silver Lining, The Wages of War, com uh, Bronze Trophy, complete the... A Complete the Aiding a Human mission. Terminated. Complete the 1 plus 1 equals win. Uh, trophy in... Uh, which is a bronze trophy. Unplugged. Complete the Screwball Chase. Bronze trophy. Frenemies. Complete the Old Friends mission. Bronze trophy. Lemon Grab! Unacceptable! Thank you! Yep. That's the name. Yeah, that is actually the name of a trophy. Uh, complete the Scales of Justice mission, a bronze, um, it's a bronze uh, trophy, and the trophy is t entitled Unacceptable. Yep. Screwballed, spectacular, better in screwball in all screwball challenges. Silver trophy and a, the gold trophy. City that never s the city sleeps. Complete the city that never sleeps. Silver lining. And that's all your DLC. And, that, and that's all your DLC uh, trophies for um, for uh, Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. There are two extra trophies uh, for going through the game on New Game Plus mode. And they are as follows. Power and Responsibility complete a playthrough on ultimate difficulty and one more time complete a new game plus playthrough the power and responsibility is silver one more time is bronze so there we go that is it for uh, the this season premiere of the trophy achievement podcast i uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the show if you did as always Hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter Day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Follow me on Twitter at Kenzie Retro if the notification, if the YouTube notifications don't work. Anything I up, anything I do on the channel will be pushed straight to my Twitter. I also have Instagram. Kenzie Retro YouTube is what you uh, type in. Uh, I update you guys when I can on what's uh, happening. Um, as far as my YouTube channel is concerned. On top of that, I've also got my Patreon. You can support me on Patreon. Support uh, If you support me from this week onwards, you will get early access to my podcast. Um, 
if uh, you will get early access to my podcast. It will go up on Thursday for my patrons, and then it will go public for my subscribers on my YouTube channel on the Friday as normal. I've got my I've got the start of my throwback Thursdays. Uh, uh, 2019 with Wild Arms, and on the right will soon be Trophy Achievement Podcast Season 2 playlist. I've got more Formula 1 action lined up uh, this weekend alongside the quarterfinals of the Rocket League NFL playoffs. Who's going to advance to the semifinals? That remains to be seen. Uh, and on top of that, um, I've got a couple of other uh, videos lined up as well uh, for this weekend. But whether I get them up, uh, whether I decide to get them up or not uh, remains uh, to be seen. But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys again next week. I'll see you guys again uh, very soon. And uh, join me next week for some more Formula One action. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.